Chapter 5, Lesson 1, Solving Systems of Linear Equation by Graphing. Chapter 5 has four lessons in it where we're going to look at three different ways to solve systems, which you can see listed down here, are three different ways that we're going to solve systems. And then coming back into play, we're going to talk about right away how there's one solution, but we'll see later on again that there could be no solution or infinitely many solutions. But today... We're going to talk about what a system of linear equations is. We're going to talk about this intersection, and we're going to use the skill of graphing. A system of linear equation is just a set. A system is a set of two or more equations. Again, linear, they're all lines, so y equals mx plus b. They're going to have that same variable. When we're talking about our solution, the big thing when we're talking about a solution is it's the intersection. It's where the two lines meet, but there's also another one here where we talk about it's an ordered pair. And that's the first definition. The solution is the ordered pair, some value, x, y, to each equation. So it works in each of the equations in the system, and that's the point of intersection where they meet, that xy point. And we're going to find that. We're going to find that a few different methods, but today's method, again, we're going to solve it by graphing. Today, to solve by graphing, we've got a couple of steps. Step one, graph each equation in the same coordinate. So we're going to graph two equations, and we're looking for some spot where they intersect. This point of intersection is our answer. Now here you can see this wonderfully interesting word, estimate. Ooh, we must be very careful, because when we're talking about estimating this point, if we're wrong, we're going to, sometimes we're going to be told to check that, meaning we're going to plug in both of those x and y into each equation. So we've got to do it twice to make sure it works for both of them. And if it doesn't work for both, then we got to go back up here, re-estimate, and then, yes, once again, go back and plug each x, y into both equations to make sure you get some sort of truth statement. Excuse me. So on this estimate part, you and I are going to hope that they really – come out to a nice spot, a good point that we don't have to estimate. But sometimes you and I have to change the scale on our graph, and that's where that estimate is going to come into play. Solve by graphing. Now here is our system of equations. Sometimes you might see them put a little bracket on the outside or something with it, just to tell you that it's a set or a system. But when we got this, today we're going to talk about graphing them. So we're going to pick one of them, and we're going to graph it. Notice this one is already nicely set up in our form y equals mx plus b, starting up here at this first point. So we're going to graph that, just like we talked about last chapter. We're going to go right here to that y-intercept. We're going to graph that spot at positive 2 first. And then we're going to use this slope of negative 2, which is negative 2 over 1, your rise and run. And from that y-intercept, you're going to go down 2 over 1. Put another dot. And that's enough to make a line. But like I said, when we talk about estimating a point, it'd be really nice if we found a point right in the middle. So we're going to go down 2 over 1 again. Down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. Just keep doing it as far as you can because then we don't really have to estimate very much. We can see that. And if you'd like to, you can practice going the opposite way. So when we talk about going backwards, instead of going down to right one, go up to left one, up to left one, up to left one, up to left one. Now we've got all those lovely points on that graph. Grab your straight edge and connect them all. Yes, you must use a straight edge. From there, you've got your line graphed. Now we're going to switch over and graph the next line. Please make sure it's in y equals mx plus b in slope-intercept form. From there, you're going to start here with your y-intercept. Going to go to a negative 3, down 1, 2, 3. Put a dot there. Again, you can get more precise on that point where it should be right there on the 
y axis. But what we'll do then is use the slope 3, which remind yourself is 3 over 1, which means from that point, we're going to go up 1, 2, 3 over 1, and then do it again. Up 3, 1, 2, 3 over 1. Have you intersected? Have the lines crossed? Yes, so you could be done, but for video purposes, I'm going to continue on and go up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. And in case they didn't intersect, once again, we can go backwards. So instead of going from that y-intercept up 3, right 1, we can go down 3, 1, 2, 3, left 1. Down 3, 1, 2, 3, left 1. And that's going to give us a nice straight line, and that can help us later on, too, to get that exact point so we don't have to estimate it. Grab a straight edge and draw in that line. Now that was step one. We were to graph each equation. Now step two says to estimate the point of intersection. So that's where we're going to come over to here. Where did they intersect? Right there. I'm going to put a little happy face there. And now this is where you and I need to approximate or estimate that point. Be very careful. That looks like it's at one, zero. And yes, that's the right ordered pair, one, zero. So normally we would box it up and say we're done. However, if Required, if it says step three, check, here's what we have to do. You have to take this point right here, your one, zero, and you need to plug that into all the equations. So in this case, into the first one and also into the second equation to make sure it gives us a truth statement. Let's do that. Find a little piece of room, whether it got room there or in between the squares or down below somewhere. I've inserted a new page. I've written the equations so we can see them. You don't need to rewrite them because they were right here above for you. So again, if you've got room down here, you can show the work down there. Otherwise, here's my work. I want to take that first equation. I'm going to write down y equals negative 2x plus 2. And now I'm going to see, does this point here, our solution of 1, 0, does that work? Plug it in. What is the y value in that ordered pair? It's 0. So 0 equals negative 2 times the x value in the point of 1 plus 2. From there, simplify. What is negative 2 times 1? That gives you a negative 2. A negative 2 plus a negative 2. Well, that gives us a zero on this side, a zero on that side, and that does check out. So it does work in that equation. Now let's check it in the other equation. Y equals 3x plus a negative 3. Mr. Walls, I can just see it. Well, good, but plug it on in. If it says check your solution and it's a required thing, this is the work you need to do. To do that again, from our ordered pair up here at the top, Plug on in the y value of 0 equals 3 times the x value in that ordered pair, which was 1, plus a negative 3. From there, go ahead and continue to simplify. 3 times a positive 1 gives you a positive 3. On the left side, we've got 0 equals 3 plus a negative 3 up here gives me 0. That is another truth statement. So our solution did work, and you are correct. It, our answer is 1, 0. The intersection point of the two lines is 1, 0. The solution to the system of equations is 1, 0, the spot where they both connect or intersect. Here's our next example. Again, a system where they're both already nicely set up for us in slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b, although I'm going to switch this next one right away before I forget. Step one, graph the first equation. Now, here is an issue that we're going to run into. Our y-intercept is at 14. You can't just say, uh, it's, it's like here-ish, Mr. Walls. That's going to mess up our graph. So you have Two choices. No, you can't just say, oh, I extended it, Mr. Walls. If you're off on the extending, then you're going to be off on your answer, which is going to make the estimation part difficult. You have two options here, and I want to show you one of them. One of them is to change the scale. So instead of counting all the way up, one, two, three, four, and going by ones, 
what we're going to do is I'm going to change the scale vertically by going by twos. Because I do that, I have to number it. My handwriting is poor, especially here, so I'm going to number every other. So this first line is going to be two, four, then there's six, eight, here's ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, which makes that top line up here. This guy is twenty. I'm not going to write it on in, and you can see my handwriting is poor, especially even poorer here with the device and method I'm using to copy this and record this video, but you can change your scale, which then if you wanted to, you could do the same thing going down. That would be a negative 2, a negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, negative 12, negative 14, negative 16, negative 18, and of course that bottom line, negative 20. That will allow us then to graph our equation where it is at 14. So put a dot there at 14, but now be very careful. When our slope is negative 5, we're going down 5 and over 1, but not down 5 lines, down 5 values. So as we're counting down, please remember that this is 2, 4, so then I got to go down just one more between that and over one. So down here, and then the scale of over one, and that's where we're going to put that dot. And continue again, down five. So that's one, two, three, four, five, over one. Put the dot there. Why are we counting that way? Because we're going up by two. So then that means down one, excuse me, one, two, three, four, five, over one. And that's where this is. Our scale going left and right on the x-axis is still one. We haven't changed that. Since we're graphing, complete it all the way out. Go all the way down, down five, right one, and do it as many times as you can. One, two, three, four, five, over one, down one, two, three, four, five, over one, down five, one, two, three, four, five, over one. And there you have it. Grab a straight edge, connect all your dots. They should all line a line. If not, we've counted wrong. Put arrows on that line, and away we go. Next one up here, graphing this second line, x intercept at negative 10, so that's down here. Put a dot there. And now your slope is x, or again, the coefficient is 1, so it's up 1 over 1. So please note that gets tricky when we change our scale. So that's why you're going to see my second method here in a couple of slides, why I sometimes try to stay away from changing the slide or the scale, because now i got to go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. So let me change those so you can see where those dots are at. So i got to go here, and here, and here, and there. And up one over one, 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 up one over one. And that's how that works. Once you've got your points, grab that straight edge again and draw the line in. Make sure you've got arrows on both sides of your lines. And now here's where that estimating comes in on your graph. We can see right here, once I put that smiley face there, it kind of covers everything out. That's where it intersects. So we're trying to estimate what that point is. So according to the way my line is graphed, it doesn't look like it crosses perfectly on there. It looks like it might be something atrocious, like one, two, three, four, negative five and a half, or negative 5.75. So this is where we kind of have to figure out what do we think it's closest to. And for the most part, it should come out nice and even. Key phrase, should, for the most part. You shouldn't have decimals. Decimals are possible. But for the most part, while we start, we're going to just see that it comes out nice and even. So I want to go over 1, 2, 3, 4. I want to say it's at 4. And then I'm going to look at it being at negative 6. You can box it on up. That's what I'm saying my answer is. But follow instructions and what your teacher tells you, what is it told to you on IXL or the assignment. If you are instructed to check your results, you need to check it and show it. If not, you could do a quick mental check where, again, you're just going to plug these into both equations. The first one, plugging in an X, take 4 times 1 
plus a negative 10, that gives me a negative 6. Hey, that's what I'm supposed to have. Great. Then you could try that up here in the second equation with mental math or writing it out. But again, I'm going to show you that work. If you've got room over here or just below, go ahead and show that there. If you need to go between the squares or off to the side, you can do that as well. If you need to bleed on over and use part of this slide, you can too. Again, if it says to check and you're required to show your work, you plug it on in, pick one of the equations. I'm going to start with that top one, negative 5x plus 14. Now plug it on in. My y value from this ordered pair up here that I'm pretty sure is my solution. I'm smiling. I'm pretty positive about it. Plug it on in. Negative 6 equals a negative 5 times the x value of 4 plus 14 from there. Simplify on out and see what we get. That gives me a negative 20. So negative 6 equals a negative 20 plus a positive 14 gives me a negative 6. That does work out. So from there, it worked in the first equation. Now we're going to jump over to the next equation. Write that down somewhere y equals x plus a negative 10. I did it mentally, Mr. Walls. Great, if you can do that, fine. But if it says to check and you are required to check, then you are also required to show the work. If not, it never hurts to do a mental check quick. Does that work out? Which I showed you on the last one already as we're simplifying. 4 plus a negative 10 gives me a negative 6. Is negative 6 equal to negative 6? Does that give us a truth statement? It does. So we were correct. It did come out, so this is our final answer, stars and smiley faces. If it didn't come out, if you got something like 0 equals 8 or negative 6 equals 17, then we were wrong with our estimation. And you have to go back and look at it again. That's why I would suggest not to alter the scale, because when, like our first example here, when it's all counting by ones, it's very easy to get a precise answer, precise value of that intersection point, that solution. Again, the standard AEEA, we're going to solve systems and analyze them in two variables. Now, notice it doesn't say how to, but what today you can put a little check mark on, we're working on the skill of solving systems by graphing, which when we come to assessment or times like that, you'll see where you have to solve some by graphing. But other times, it's just going to say solve, and this is one of the methods. We've talked about the vocabulary system of linear equations and how we have one solution and the intersection, so you can cross all those off as we're working our way to this standard. Now, when we have these, they're not set up in y equals mx plus b, so you have two choices. You can graph them as they are using our intercepts, or you could quickly rewrite them if you wanted to, adding a negative 1x. So that gives me y equals negative 1x plus 1. And then this other equation up here, solving for this, adding a negative 2x to both sides. So I got a negative 1y equals a negative 2x plus a negative 4. Divide by negative 1. So we can't have a negative y, so we got y equals a positive 2x plus a positive 4. So that is an option as well. You could rewrite it because now we've got two equations in slope-intercept form, and we can graph those quick using our y-intercepts and our points. That is one option. So again, you could use these systems of equations that are already in slope-intercept form to graph it. I find it useful this way because then I can get many points on my line because I'm using my slope. But another way to graph it, another way to solve it, I'm going to show that to you as well, because this is set up in our standard form. We could use our x and y intercepts, so that's plus and negative 1 up there. Careful, don't lose that, so when you're writing that out the first time, and I plug in a 0 for my y value, that cancels out, so that gives me 2x equals a negative 4. Don't lose that negative, I've done that before. Divide by 2, solving, that means x-intercept is at negative 2. When y is 0, right there is your y-intercept, I'll make a nice little dot for that one, 
and then plug a zero in again now for the other thing. So if I plug in a zero for x plus a negative 1y equals negative 4, that cancels out. Negative 1y equals negative 4. Divide both sides by negative 1. Gives you a y-intercept of 4, your y-value of 4 when x is 0. You've got two points, so grab your straight edge and connect those very carefully. And when you draw that line in, draw it as long as your coordinate graph, as long as this grid paper is. Make that line super long because right now we don't know where these lines are going to intersect. Now, go to your next point. Again, this one I like very nicely since if I plug a zero in for x, that second equation right up here on top, I get y equals 1. All right, so 1y equals 1. I'm going to put a little dot. I'm going to make a better one here. Boop. There we go. Yay, a flower. Pretty. So moving on, we got, again, plugging in a 0 for y. We get x equals 1. I could have done that, Mr. Wells, in my head. Great. If you have to show the work, show it if it's required. If not, if it's on IXL or something, you can just graph them quick. But here's another method to do that. So then x equals 1 right here. Again, I'll put another nice larger dot. You guys can do that on your own because you can see it. And then again, grab your straight edge and make a really long line. Be very careful that you connect those two points as evenly and straight as possible so we can make sure our estimation works well. Okay, and once you've drawn that in, make sure you've got arrows on both sides. And then you're just looking for the solution to our system of equations. You're looking for that point of intersection, which looks like it's right there. Yay, happy face. And again, because I didn't change the scale on this, it's a lot easier to estimate that point right here where they are intersecting. And that looks like, careful of your order, make sure you write the x value of negative 1 first and positive 2. That's all you're required to do. Box it up and you've got it. Otherwise, if instructions or your teacher requires you to check and to show the work, you can do that. Again, if you're not, you could do a quick little check. If I plugged in a negative 1 for x and a 2 for y, negative 1 plus 2 does give me a positive 1. That works. You can do it mentally and just double check them very quickly. Again, negative 1 here on the top. So 2 times a negative 1 gives me a negative 2, and negative 1 times 2 gives me a negative 2. Negative 2 plus negative 2 gives me negative 4, and it works. Mental math. But again, you can skip this on the video here, what I'm about to do, if you already got it or are not required to do it by your teacher. I'm going to show the work to check those very quickly. So again, you'll just pick one of those. I'll pick the top equation first. You write it on down. Then you just plug on in your value, negative 1 for x. Remember that that's multiplying, so whether you want to put a parenthesis or a time sign, you can do that. And then the y value of 2 equal to negative 4. And then from there, we're just going to simplify. So I get negative 2 plus a negative 2. Negative 2 plus negative 2 gives me negative 4 on the right side. That all stays negative 4, and that did work out. Wonderful. So then we'll go to the next equation, x plus y. I can already see it, Mr. Wolf. You already showed it to us. Yeah, I know, but we're still going to show the work. So negative 1 plus your positive 2. Excuse me, watch those signs so you don't get that wrong. And from there, then again, you're just going to simplify that. Mental math or calculator says that's 1. Does 1 equal 1? And it does, so that also works. So we were correct with our system, with our solution up here. You will see in this chapter we're going to deal with word problems as well. Some of them, like this football example, maybe is intriguing. Some of them are not. But real-life instances where we could use a system of linear equations to find an answer. So when we talk about this one here, whether you're doing it on IXL with word problems for assignment or extra practice, you can do that as well. But you will see some of these on your textbook assignment and quizzes and on worksheets. A kicker on a football team scores one point for an extra point, one that do after a touchdown and three points for making a field goal. So now notice, here's what happens. We have to interpret what's happening. The kicker makes a total of six extra points and field goals. All right, oh, wait, do we know how many 
Extra points. The kicks after the touchdown he made. Read the problem. It doesn't say it. Do we know how many field goals he kicked? No, it does not tell us that. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick a variable for them. So since the one point is first, I'm going to call that X. And since the three point, the field goal is second, I'm going to call that Y. We don't know how many extra points he made. I'm going to call it X plus Y, somehow, however many field goals he made. But we know that totals six. Then you can see he scores 12 points. That 12 total points, though, goes here. We've got to figure out what does he score points on. Well, he gets one point for every extra point he makes. So one for every X plus three points for every field goal or three points for every Y. Now that is how we write our system of equations. And now you can see up next it says to solve the systems. As shown before, you could take this system right here, which is part one or part A's answer to write a system. And you could graph it using your intercepts like the previous slide. I'm going to switch it over so that they're all set up in y equals mx plus b in slope intercept form because it's quicker to graph and helps me get more points. And the more points you put on that graph for this method by solving by graphing, the easier it is to estimate or know exactly your point of intersection, our solution. So solving for this, negative 1x to both sides gives me y equals negative 1x plus 6. And then taking care of this guy on the bottom, same thing. Hmm, interesting, adding a negative 1x. That'll work. So I got 3y equals negative 1x plus 12. But I do have to divide by 3 to get that y all by itself. Now I'm going to leave these guys as their own term. I'm going to make each one their own separate fraction. So negative 1 third x. Plus, and now when I take 12 divided by 3, that leaves me 4. Both of these are correct answers for systems of equations. I'm going to take that second one over here, these ones, and I'm going to graph those. You have them right on the next slide, so you can start graphing it on that coordinate plane. I'm going to copy them over so we can see it for notes purposes. Since they're already set up in y equals mx plus b, our slope intercept form, we can graph them really quickly. Top one in blue, going to graph at six. Count carefully. So put a dot there. Again, I'm going to make a nice big dot. And then use your slope of negative one, which again is negative one over one. So down one over one. Down one over one. Do it as many times as you can because now we'll see all these points, which will help us estimate our point of intersection a whole lot easier, as well as you can go backwards. So from this y-intercept up here, going backwards. So instead of going down one, right one, do the opposite. Up one, left one. Up one, left one. Up one, left one. Once you've got all those lovely points, grab your straight edge and connect them. Yeah, you only needed two, but... I find if you put them all on there, it makes that a whole lot easier for graphing and estimating your point of intersection, that solution. Make sure you got arrows on both sides, connect it using a straight edge. Then I'm going to go graph the next one. Here's our y-intercept at 4. So go to 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Put a dot there, and then from there, go down 1, right 3, 1, 2, 3. Down one, right three, one, two. Down one, three. Again, can you see where you intersected? Yeah, so then you could stop right away. Once you see where that point of intersection is, woohoo, yay, happy face. You can just stop there, but for notes purposes and practice sake, I'm gonna keep going on. I'm gonna show you again going the opposite way. So when we go the opposite way, when we go left, we go the way that slope man cannot go. That's in the previous video if you're not familiar with slope, man. When we go backwards, do the opposite. So instead of down one, right three, go up one, left three. Up one, left three. Up one, left three. And then connect those points with the line. Again, use the straight edge. You have to use the straight edge because you don't want to go uh about there. Or again, 
if you were using just the pen, like, uh, there you go, Mr. Walls. I think, yeah, they should intersect like a here-ish. No, you don't want that. So use that straight edge. Take the time to graph it in, even though right now we can see it. Take good time to graph it in so you know right where that intersection is at with minimal estimation needed. Put arrows in, and now again we're going to estimate this point right here where they both crossed. That was that. One, two, three. Three. If not required, do a quick mental check to see if that works. If it is required, here we go again. I'll plug it on quick so we can see it. Otherwise, you're done. So again, you can skip this portion of it. Skip ahead a, a little bit until we're done with the checking. Again, if it's required, you got to show it. So you write down that first equation, y equals negative 1x plus 6. Mr. Wolves, I can do it in my head. Great. But if it's required to check, I need to see the work. So plug it on in. Y value of 3 equals negative 1 times your x value of 3 plus 6. From there, go ahead and simplify. So that's negative 3. A negative 3 plus a positive 6 gives you a positive 3. It works. Go to the next equation. y equals negative 1 third x plus 4. Yes, write down the original equation if you're required to check. Then plug on in. y is 3. So 3 equals negative 1 third times 3 plus 4. Be very careful there. Don't lose the negative sign. When you're doing this, don't forget that's 3 over 1. So that does cross cancel and simplify down to negative 1. 3 equals negative 1 plus a positive 4 does give us positive 3. So that does check. So we were right. You graphed it correctly. Again, we're doing all this because we want to be able to analyze and solve system of equations and two variables using any method. Right now, we've talked about graphing. Again, a system of equations, linear equations with one solution. And we're talking about intersections. That is what our solution is today. Again, the goal today that we can write and solve systems of linear equations by graphing and in turn also solve real life problems.